Hello dear students, welcome back to the class. Last video we discussed about adaptation and its types, long term adaptation and short term adaptation. And also we discussed about what the adaptation in plants. What are the three types of adaptation in plants? Yes, hydrophytes, mesophytes and xerophytes. So today we are going to discuss the topic hydrophytes. What? Hydrophytes. Hydrophytes. So we already know about how the hydrophytes means what the plants that lives in water. The plants that lives in water. That's what hydrophytes. So these hydrophytes they are three types. Okay, hydrophytes are three types. Okay, hydrophytes are mainly three types. What are that? First one, free floating. What? First one is what? Free floating. Okay, and second one, second one is for rooted and free floating. Rooted and rooted and free floating. Okay, first one is free floating, and second one rooted and free floating. Okay, and third one submerged, and third one what? Submerged plants. So these are the mainly classified in our hydrophytes. So hydrophytes means you know that these plants live in more water. Okay, they live in water. So these hydrophytes mainly classified in three: free floating, rooted, and free floating, and submerged. Okay. So first we are going to discussing about this free floating. Free floating which means what? I think so. You people you know about what you know you saw that what. Some plants that are floating on the river and the pond, they are floating. Always you can able to see that plants are just above the water, just above the water. These type of plants that we call as for free floating, their roots are not attached to the soil substratum. Okay, so these free floating, which means what? These plants we can able to see where. The outer surface of the water, they are freely floating. Okay, so these plants, these plants root, that is not got attached to the soil substrate. Is it clear? Examples are Pistia, Bulfia, Echinacea. These are the examples. Pistia, Echinacea is also called as what water plant. Once again, free floating. Free floating means what? The plants that float freely float on the surface of water. Okay, freely we can able to see 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 the surface of water. Okay, so these plants roots that will be not got fixed otherwise that will be not uh, fixed on the soil substrate. Okay, so the examples are Pistia, Bulfia, and Echinacea. Pistia, Bulfia, Echinacea. And the second one, rooted and free floating. See, rooted and free floating here. Rooted means in this rooted and free floating in this type of plants, these plants roots are fixed in soil substrate. Okay, in these plants roots are fixed in soil substrate, but their leaves that float on their water surface. These plants leaves that what float on their water surface. Okay. With the petiole, the petiole, the petiole is too what long, long. Okay, the petiole is what too long. Examples are what nilambo. What? What is this nilambo? Nilambo that is what lotus, water lily. And Jane water lily. These are the examples. So see, rooted and free floating plants. Or rooted and free floating, which means what? These plants roots are fixed on the soil substrate, but they have a long petiole. Through this petiole, the leaves are comes above the water surface and they floating. Okay. The examples are what? The lambo. The lambo means what? That is a what? Lotus. Okay. And water lily, jade water lily. These are the examples of what? Rooted and free floating. Is it clear? Okay, now we are going to discuss about the submerged plants. Submerged plants which means what? The plants that lives inside the water, which means the plants root 
and full body that is in where full part is where it is under the water only submerged these plants are remain where these plants are remain where submerged in water so stop fixed in soil substrate yeah. open in where soil substrate is it clear yes and examples of this yes varis maria then hydla these are the examples of what varis maria hydla these are the examples of what submerged plants i hope all of you understood this topic okay now that some of the adaptation in hydrophytes plants okay adaptation of hydrophytes plants submerged parts of the hydrophytes is covered with a mucilage okay submerged parts of the hydrophytes that is covered with a what mucilage actually the mus mucilage that will be what protect the plant part from the decay okay from a decay okay and second one they have many the what roots are either present or absent other is poorly developed okay these hydrophytes plants what their roots are either present or absent or poorly developed or poorly developed they are devoid of root cap and root hairs they are devoid of what root cap and root hairs okay and third point their stem is spongy and flexible their stem is what spongy and flexible and also have a what number of air space and also have a what number of air space further thin and small the leaves are see submerged plants submerged plants leaves are thin small ribbon shaped leaves thin small and ribbon shaped leaves such leaves are allow water to pass through them with the least resistance okay so examples of these type of leaves that's what hydrilla valsnaria eucalyptaria etc okay and some leaves that means uh, jane water lily leaves you know style that is a bigger in structure large leaf okay jane water lily that leaves are what large leaf of the lotus leaves are also what comparatively these plant this type of leaves it's a Comparing with hydrilla and what varies in area, eucalyptaria. Comparing with these, the lotus and jane water lily, these are what large leaf. Okay. And the next one, fifth point. Hydrophytes in certain certain parts are in hydrophytes certain parts are inflated. Certain parts are inflated. So they store large quantity of air. They store what large quantity of air. Examples: Neptunia, Neptunia stems and uh, Echinacea, that's your echinacea, and trapa, and submerged hydrophytes plants. The parts are inflated, and they store the large quantity of air. All hydrophytes that possess special tissues, that's what air and clayma. What air and clayma tissue? Okay, all that submerged plants having what special tissue? That's what air and clayma. What is it? Air and clayma. With this air and clayma, that provide the flexibility and buoyancy. What flexibility and buoyancy? Next point: mechanical tissue and water conducting elements poorly developed. Okay, mechanical tissue and water conducting elements poorly developed. So in submerged plants, mechanical tissue and water conducting elements such poorly developed. Okay, and the last point, last point, what the phloem or food conducting tissue? Phloem or food conducting tissue that is what well developed. So. In case of mechanical or water conducting tissue, that is for poorly developed, and phloem or food conducting tissue that is well developed. So these are the some of the adaptations in hydrophytes. Okay, I hope all of you understood this topic. Okay, thank you.